Another head hangs lowly. Child is slowly taken, and the violence causes such silence. Who、oh, are we mistaken? But you see, it's not me. It's not my family. In your head, in your head, they're fighting with their tanks and their bombs and their bombs and their guns. In your head, in your head, they're saying to myself, "Why do we deserve this?" Um, I'll ignore the use of the term Palestinian since there is no such nation or people. Zombie, zombie, zombie. What's in your head? In your head, zombie, zombie, zombie. Hey, 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 oh. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Trauma Pond HQ. My name is Olivia, and this is where we sit by the pond and we have a little chat. Now today. I do want to talk about a particular subject that is actually way too close for home for me, and I have to be exceptionally careful with how I deliver this because, unfortunately, I live in Australia. So because of that, I have to be very careful about this particular topic. As an Irish person, I know to a certain extent what is actually happening with the war in Israel and Palestine, and. Only because I have actually experienced it to the level that I have experienced it, I'm not saying that what we experienced in Ireland is the same by any standard. I actually think what is happening there is a hundred times worse. But I do understand what these people are going through, and I thought that if I shared this particular experience, maybe there might be something that you could learn of truth. Because if there is one thing that we can guarantee, is that we are all being fed lies. And as a person who was fed lies her entire life, I feel like it's really important for me to let you know that there are so many people that don't realize what they're actually supporting. And I want to try and be as diplomatic and as open as possible without being upset, vindictive, overly emotional. Because unfortunately, what is happening is on a level that people can't even imagine. And what a lot of people don't know is that this has been going on since right after World War II. It was almost like the very idea of hurt people hurt people gave a rite of passage for the Israelis to do what they do. So just to go over a few facts, because there is one person who is being obnoxiously lied, and I completely understand why. Because when you are fed that you are the superior person because of what you believe, and you don't care about the very people. That are right there, having to endure the absolute abhorrent actions of your people's behaviour. Why wouldn't you think that it's them that's the fault? Growing up in Northern Ireland, I was actually brought up Protestant. My grandfather was very high up in his Orange Order. Because of my granddad's position, we were brought up exceptionally religious. He was also the chairman of the church that we went to. Now, I was brought up. In the Church of Ireland religion, which is the first tear away of the Catholic Church. As a child, it didn't make any sense to me why we were fighting, why there were bombs constantly going off, why there were so many killings, why there were riots, why we always had to be stopped at checkpoints all the time by the army. There were regular occasions where school buses with small children, myself included, would have our bus stop by the army so that they could do a search. The amount of times that we had to take alternative routes because there was a bomb waiting somewhere. And when I was very young, I actually dodged one with my grandma by all of I believe it was an hour. Now let me explain why I was blindsided to believe that Catholics were the bad people. It's because you are taught, even in school, that Catholics are the reason why there are so many problems. Catholics were the reason why we were fighting. Catholics were the ones that stole the land, and that they had the deadliest terrorist group in the world. But a terrorist group is only born out of necessity against an agenda that has completely silenced and taken over the very people that they have tried to harm. Being brought up, I was told that I had to hate Catholics just because they were born Catholic. As a very young child, because I didn't understand any of this, I remember when I was six years old and asking my granny and granda, 
If the Catholics don't like us so much, why don't they just move? Then when you're in school, you are taught the history from the 1500s onwards. Nothing backwards. Not the fact that the English were the ones that had decided to rape and pillage the way right through the country and then across the entire world. Everything I was taught as a kid was that the reason why we were fighting each other was because the Catholics stole the land that belonged to us. They stole the land back because who stole it from the Irish in the first place? The English. The same way they stole Scotland, Wales, America, India, many countries in Africa. Let's not forget, obviously, Australia. As a matter of fact, the English ended up taking over 90% of the world's countries. And for every country they took over, they did it the exact same way. The very reason why the Irish Republican Army was created was so that they could get the very land back that was stolen from them by the English. So the very fact that the Irish decided to fight to get their land back was then treated as a terrorist action. If you're not with us, you're against us, right? Now you will find that in a lot of parts of Northern Ireland, they will back the Israeli flag. You will also find that in Catholic areas, they are backing the Palestinian flag. So there is an identity crisis within Northern Ireland. So as a kid being brought up in Northern Ireland, we are Irish and British at the same time. As far as I'm aware, Northern Ireland is the only country in the world where you were born a dual national straight away. Even though Northern Ireland is not a part of Britain, it's a part of the UK. It's still an Irish sovereign land. The identity crisis of Northern Ireland is a mess. It doesn't know what it is. And you know the very people that make it so much worse? The Protestants. Yes, my own kind. When I finally started being able to dig deep and understand the truth behind what had happened with the very land that I was brought up on, to discover that I had been backing the very people who destroyed and massacred millions of people and how they did it. You are taught to believe that everything you do is right because the very people who you are supposed to hate are the ones that are trying to ruin everything that you stand for. It is a horrible thing to come to the realization. If anything, you end up becoming a victim of betrayal trauma. Now, one of the loudest people of this particular movement who has no idea what he's actually talking about is Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, who is a person who I've never particularly liked because I do believe that he has got psychopathic tendencies. You are definitely allowed to fight against anyone who decides to go and kill anybody. That's absolutely fine. But the fact that you won't condemn your own people who are lying about all of the things that they say that they're doing. We send them love, concrete, food. We take people from Palestine, bring them to Israel, educate them, send these doctors that we trained. 100% true. Yeah, you know who else said that? Mandalay. As a matter of fact, this is something that Abby Martin has talked about many times on the Joe Rogan podcast, talking about how Palestine has been under attack for such a long time. As a matter of fact, she brings this one up. Israel controls their water, the passageways, everything. That They don't let them leave. Like a lot of these people who have been shot with sniper rifles can't even get treatment because they're denied treatment. So there's so many amputations that are totally unnecessary. So now you have like thousands of people who are just amputated. But I mean, we're talking about executing children in s sniper scopes. And there's videos of these soldiers gleefully laughing. They are literally like, man, did you see his legs go up? Like, look at that, man. Oh, did you get a headshot? You had Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the third holiest site in Islam, on fire. And thousands of Jewish Israeli settlers chanting death to Arabs and burn their memory. Now, don't you find it very hypocritical that for a man that claims to be pro-life, is not condemning his people for this. IDF soldiers have t-shirts where they have pregnant women in crosshairs that says one shot, two kills. Like these people are yeah. sick, yeah. Is there yes. a photo of that Yes, anywhere? there is, look it up. It's not very pro-life of you, Ben. I think you should put it on. Everything that is going on with this, it's going to be a massive rude awakening if Ben should ever find the guts to go to Gaza and actually see what is happening. But I doubt he ever will because he's too much of a proud man, I guess. It's clearly unjust what the IDF has been doing to the Palestinians because there's a vast disparity between the number of Palestinians being killed and the number of Israelis. I mean, I would the certainly hope that Israel is, is killing more Hamas. This isn't members. a conflict. I've... This isn't a conflict. This is one-sided ethnic okay, cleansing. So... The very fact that he completely ignored everything that she was saying. She was identifying the exact things that his people were doing to her people. Yeah, you can condemn Hamas, that's absolutely fine. But she wasn't talking about Hamas, she was talking about Palestinians. 
And the very fact that this has been going on since 1948 goes to show that Ben is only now starting to raise his voice against people who are being murdered, children who are being murdered, only when the dog bites back. Honestly, this entire scenario is exactly what is wrong with victim blaming. He is victim blaming the very people who have been attacked since 1948. It is absolutely abhorrent for anyone to think that it's okay that this has been going on for this long. You may as well never be pro-life. The very idea of being Palestinian born in those places, they say that if you are born there, you may as well be born dead. And for a man that seems to be pro-life, I don't see you condemning the very people that have been doing this to the innocent civilians of Palestine. You're certainly not going against it, but you are saying, oh, but it's all Hamas's fault. How many times does a dog have to be beaten to a pulp before it decides to bite back? And just because it's biting back, now it has to be put down. If you want to stand with your people, Mr. Shapiro, I suggest you start wearing the shirt that your people decide to throw on and make an absolute mockery of your pro-life agenda. Don't ever think you can bully me into saying anything. That's never going to happen. I'm not going to condemn Hamas any faster than you guys are going to condemn Israel. When you do that, I'll do it. Sounds childish? Cool. I'll be a child. And you know what? I'm going to be a petulant child with her because this is something that is way too close to home. This is something that my people and the Palestinian people understand better than anyone. What would you know about it? Oh, when we survived the Holocaust. I was like, and? Right. So is it the hurt people hurt people scenario? You want to take down the little guys because that's how you get respect. Like I said before, I never liked Ben Shapiro in the first place because I thought there was something wrong with him. And now this goes to show just how wrong he is. I'm sorry to the people that have to endure all of the pain and suffering that is being inflicted on them. And I truly hope, truly, truly, truly hope that there is going to be peace very soon. I'm not saying that God doesn't exist, but throughout the Bible, he does send messengers. And this ended up being too much of a coincidence just before the Hamas attack. I am very much ashamed of what I was brought up to believe. And so should Ben Shapiro. Because when that moment comes that you have the rude awakening, I truly hope God can only forgive you for your sins.